Tyler, we did a video about a week ago taking a look at QuantumScape, setting some expectations for 2024 and beyond. And we got a comment from someone on YouTube about the different ways that QuantumScape can potentially monetize its products. And we didn't really talk a lot about the details. Are you ready to hash out how QuantumScape, the different ways that they can move from pre-production and R&D into commercialization? There's a lot of options here. So drawing them out and giving investors like a choose your adventure uh, approach to this, yeah, it's a good exercise. Go to our special link, go to fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. You definitely want to check that out. Some great companies on that list. Okay, Tyler. So the backstory real quick for those that haven't followed QuantumScape really closely, maybe didn't watch that prior video. We've seen this company, it's a startup, make some pretty tremendous progress over the past really 18 months in moving its technology forward, getting feedback from its third parties on its pre-production samples and get to the point where they're starting to talk about bringing production actually bringing it online in 2024. I'll admit I'm the curmudgeon one who tends to shy away from startups and things like that. The idea of this sounds ambitious, this sounds really cool, but it also sounds like a pie in the sky idea that I don't know if it's going to be a viable business. There was a big rush for battery companies like seven or eight years prior where you had a bunch of companies that just didn't work out. And this just, it sniffed like that. But so far it's made enough progress then it's looking like it could pull it off, at least in terms of having a viable commercial product. Now, manufacturing a viable commercial product is where we're going to focus on here because that's where things get a little bit different. And if you think about what the company has done so far, there was a core technology that they were working on developing that it's not, it's still not where it needs to be based on everything we've heard that in terms of actually manufacturing and packaging, there's the separator in their solid state cells. So there are things that they're still working on, but it does look like they've made tremendous progress. Tyler, they've hired some people that come from industries, manufacturing things like semiconductors that are really high precision, high volume as well, that, that seem like they're going to carry over. You start hiring the people that know how to make this stuff. Those are steps in the right direction. So we know those things have happened. We also know the company has roughly, in round figures, about a billion dollars, which is plenty of cash to pay for operations, to fund R&D for the next year or two. But we know that it costs a lot more than that to build a battery factory, especially a battery factory to build a technology that only exists build. in a lab so far. Yeah. So build a factory to build something that's never been built before. Sorry, billion dollars just ain't going to cut it, especially when you're not doing it for, I don't know, something small scale like Apple watches or mobile devices or things like that. They want to make batteries for automobiles and those are massive batteries. And when we talk about automotive production, we're talking globally tens of millions of cars annually. And in the, in some version of the future, a lot of those are going to be electric vehicles, especially if they, if we have a stepwise change in battery technology, like quantum scape purpose it to be. Yeah. Scale is going to matter. That's a big facility. That's going to cost a lot of money. And it's something that QuantumScape just doesn't really have right now. Yeah, a, a lack of money to do that is is a limiting factor. And a couple of things that are important to consider because it takes money to make money to build these factories. And there are a lot more ways to do it than just raising the money to, to build it yourself and then going it alone. So let's talk about the different ways we can do it. But let's start the most pure way for QuantumScape to have complete control over the entire process and also participate most fully in every profit dollar that is generated by its technology, that would be to raise the capital to start building these factories on its own, right? Yeah. You raise the capital internally, which is either going to be debt or it's going to be equity, probably some blend of the two. You can slice up that portion in a myriad of ways. You can do things like secure the debt on the actual facility. They, look, we don't have to get into too much of the, 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 the wonkiness of debt and equity financing, but it's going to be sliced up in that way, one way or the other, because like we said, they don't have profits. There's no way to actually invest cash flows into this. You're starting from zero and that those are your two ways of getting capital. And unless there is some new magical third way of raising capital that we have not explored yet, that's how it goes. And so it would be a tremendous undertaking for a business of this size doesn't have a lot of construction management or project development under its belt to do something like this. And 
is definitely the most upside because you'd end up keeping all the margin if it were to all work out right but you also take on all the risks and that's where if you're doing the trade-off in terms of risk reward it sounds the nicest on paper but exposes you most to the downsides. Let's talk a little bit about the cost to do that. And I'm going to show a couple numbers on the screen here. Enterprise value in market caps. QuantumScape doesn't have any debt and it has a pretty sizable amount of cash. So enterprise value, this $2.55 billion number, this is essentially what the company is worth after you've paid off debt, subtracting the cash. So this is what you'd be getting for the non-cash assets of the business is the way to think about it. So the intellectual property, really at this point, that's really your, that's what you pay for, for what they've developed so far and the small amount of assets that they have collected. Now I'm showing this because this is a really important number if you're going to use equity to raise money. So let's say they wanted to start small and build a pretty low volume. Let's just say maybe Porsche. That's part of Volkswagen, right? Porsche is part of Volkswagen. So they wanted to make some high-end batteries for Porsche. It's a lower volume. Let's say they want to spend $500 million to build a low volume factory to get things going, start generate some revenue, get some good margins on it. Even if they raise $500 million with equity, that's a 20% dilution right off the top. Immediately, you're taking 20% of the shares, the percentage of the business that other people own, and you're giving it to whoever has to buy those new shares. So that is pretty substantial. It would also be, if you got $500 million in debt, that would be a pretty large amount of the equity stack, right? 20% debt to equity would be very high. This is a company that has no revenue, doesn't generate cash flow, which means that your lenders would want some very favorable terms to them, convertible, and also probably a very high interest rate. So yeah, you get to keep the profit dollars when you're done building it, but guess who stands in line to get paid first? Your suppliers and your lenders, right? Yeah, and if things go sideways with debt, they have first claim on the assets and can take it from you. Exactly. And that's, I wanted to show that first because not only does it show that how sure that has the most upside, but as you said, it's the most risk. Tyler, let's talk about one that I think is a blend of these. And that's something that they already have in place with Volkswagen and that's doing a joint venture. Yeah. So the idea of the joint venture is for this example's sake, rather than fronting all the capital for that production facility, you front half of it and your joint venture partner fronts half of it and they bring in their manufacturing expertise, which would allow them to right. ramp up production, ramp up a facility and bring it into operations and how to run lean operations. Certainly automakers are really good at supply chain management and efficient operations. And so you have things like that. If you have a joint venture, you got to split the profits and there, there'll probably be some sort of revenue share. One example that we've seen, not necessarily in batteries, but it's been in semiconductors recently. Uh, I think it was Brookfield Infrastructure actually did a joint venture with- That's correct. Yeah, yeah. with uh, Intel's Ohio factory that's gonna be used for their contract manufacturing. Brookfield Infrastructure is providing a substantial amount of the capital and they'll also earn a substantial amount of the profits as well. But it was a way for Intel to move into a new business that it's trying to build and de-risk from a capital perspective while still being able to participate and leverage its IP. And I think that of the model that we would be more likely to see from QuantumScape with this, frankly, would probably be more like something we saw with a company called Westport. Oh goodness, I can't even remember their full name, but Westport essentially had a really high value intellectual property for converting diesel engines to, to burn natural gas. They had the IP, but they didn't have the money. Cummins, you know what they're really good at making, Tyler? Diesel engines. So the two companies formed a joint venture. So I think QuantumScape would probably do something like that. And the way that they would help co-fund that JV, they'd bring the IP and they would probably also have an equity stake that they would give to the JV partner that's bringing the actual money. And that's how it would likely start off. And honestly, I think that there's a better than even chance we're going to see something like that happen. There's one other way. There's one other way too, I think it's worth mentioning, Tyler, that QuantumScape could also leverage its IP, make money. It's the least risk, but it's also the least amount of money, and that's licensing. Yeah, so the idea being like, look, we're not even going to try to manufacture this thing in-house. There's a lot of other companies that are just good at manufacturing. There are contract manufacturers across the spectrum of automotive, battery, somebody like a Panasonic or uh, LG Chem, both Panasonic is Japanese, LG Chem is Korean. They're just 
battery making monsters in terms of overall production. They know how to do it. They know how to scale incredibly well, but they might not have the IP related to solid state batteries. And so I know that Toyota has come out with their own solid state and they've been talking about it too. There may be an incentive for battery makers worrying about being left behind, wanting to license somebody's IP like a QuantumScapes and QuantumScape gets to go look you pay us royalties or a, a licensing fee, either annually or a royalty on your production. And that is incredibly high margin because there's no capital outlays for QuantumScape, more or less. You're just basically licensing intellectual property. It would be a unique way of doing it. It's not the first time I've heard of a company doing it, but for a company its size and the other assets it has, it's an option. I actually like it based on where it is in its, its current life cycle, whether or not management would be willing to do it, I think is a different question. I, I certainly as a shareholder, if, they, if I heard we're going to do a licensing agreement with LG Chem or Panasonic, I'd actually be on board with that. To summarize everything we've talked about here, there's a lot of ways to, to skin this cat, so to speak, Tyler, that, that QuantumScape could use. And I think 2024 is the year that we're going to get some answers about that. I lean towards seeing like the JV model is probably going to be the primary model we see and maybe some internal manufacturing at smaller scale. Whether they decide to go the licensing approach, I don't think they've necessarily shown a lot of interest in doing that. But time will tell. 2024 for sure, Tyler, we're going to learn a tremendous amount more about QuantumScape than we knew at the end of 2023.